Hey, John Hickok here. Behind one of these hands is a shotgun. So you guys guess which one. All right, if you guessed this hand, then you thought I was breaking the rules of gun safety. So thanks for that. It's obviously this one. That's process of elimination. There it is. A hand-sized shotgun. So this gun um, is, a, is a pistol, a handgun. Uh, cannon, whatever you want to call it, that I actually bought on my 21st birthday. I didn't have a lot of money at the time, and I thought it would be cool to buy my first handgun the, the, when it was first available for me to do it. And um, this is what I got. It cost me about 105 bucks. I've had this thing. Uh, at one point, I think I lost it. You know, it's it's like barely a gun. I mean, it barely even should be considered a gun. It looks like something that uh, would have been made 500 years ago or something. But surprisingly, it kind of works. Um, it's made, it was made in uh, Ducktown, Tennessee. No coincidence, I assume. By uh, Linead Incorporated. I don't know if that's how you uh, pronounce it or not. But I think it was it's sold by Cobra because it's got Cobra on the grips. And I think the, the, and the box was Cobra, I remember, uh, when, I, when I first got it. Uh, they're the ones that make those. Uh, like the semi-automatic um, Mac-10 clones and the uh, Mac-11 clones, some things like that. Not known to be really high-end guns. That's that's for sure. And this thing cost—I can't remember if I said already—but it cost like about 105 bucks, something like that, when I first got it. And essentially, what it is, it's a little pocket blaster. Pocket blaster is what I used to call it. Um, it's a single shot, no ejector, no, no ejection whatsoever. Single shot, 410 or 45 long Colt, and they also had a double barrel version of it. That was a little more expensive, you know, so I couldn't spring for the, you know, the really nice one. So I went with the single barrel. Um, it's not fun to shoot. That's why I, other than firing like one shot before I did this video, I haven't shot this thing in years. It's just been kind of laying around, and I thought I'll get it out and show you guys because I've got a little personal history with it, you know, being my first handgun that I, that I bought myself on my 21st birthday. Um, I decided I'd show you guys. So, okay. Show you guys how it works. Appreciate Federal, of course, hooking us up. Uh, we've got some 45 Long Colt here. Some 410 shells. Also, go down to the link in the description and join the NRA. We have not done that yet. And uh, also, thanks to BudsGunShop.com. Appreciate all of their support. So, it will fit a, a 410, or you can put a 45 Long Colt in there, just like yeah, you know, you're used to with the the Taurus Judge and the Smith and Wesson Governor, but this is like the ultimate cheap, crappy version of it. So let me show you how it how it operates here. It's a very solid, you know, heavy thing. Um, okay, so it's it's actually pretty safe. It's a pretty safe gun, surprisingly, assuming that it doesn't fall apart on you. So you've got this cross bolt right here, and this is the safety. Okay, so in this position, I can't cock the hammer. I can't do anything with the hammer but I can open it and load it. But if I loaded it, there's no way I can I can fire this gun, unless I dropped it maybe. I, I, even then, I don't think, you know, it wouldn't go off because the hammer's being blocked by this uh, cross bolt. So what I have to do if I want to fire the gun, let's say I've loaded it, I have to pull the hammer back just a little bit, push it across, and pull the hammer back all the way, and then, then it's ready to fire. Pow, bam. And, uh, if I want to, uh, but then you can't, once you fired it, you can't open it. So what you have to do is then pull the hammer back again, about halfway. There's no clicks or anything. You just have to kind of guess and kind of feel, you know, for when this starts to move. And uh, you get it back the right right distance and then you push that across and then now you can open it again. So I'll go ahead and pop one in there and shoot it for you guys. I hate shooting this thing, but I really want to show it to you. Okay. I'm going to shoot that two liter right there and we'll see what it does. Okay, got it. Got several of the, of the shots on them. It worked. Now, it, it's, it's not fun to shoot. Again, it, it hurts, pops your knuckle right here pretty bad. But I don't know, it doesn't hurt too bad. It's doable. Um, it's just not, not comfortable. And of course, there's no ejector on there, so you gotta pop the shell out. Pop him out of there. Right, let's try another one. Now, um, 
back when I, I when I first got this thing, I kind of messed around with it. And I figured out there is a way to to kind of do it one-handed. It's something like this. I forget exactly where you can kind of take that safety off and then make it ready to fire. But it's not exactly something I would recommend for concealed carry, even though it would fit in your pocket really well. Just because, you know, it's kind of an archaic looking thing. All right, try again. I'm gonna shoot the cowboy this time. Wow, that hurt. Okay, and again, to open it up, I start pulling the hammer back, push that across. And open it up. So, I mean, you know, if you, I don't even know if they still make these, to be honest. Um, but if they do still make these or something like it, I'm sure they're around if you really have to have one for some reason. If you can't afford any other type of gun and you had a chance to get one of these for like a hundred bucks and you have a care permit, I mean, if, again, it beats a sharp stick, I guess. It seems to be, you know, somewhat well made. I remember at one point this piece right here that uh, you know you grab right here to pull back this the um, the release for the the barrel to open it up basically uh, that just flew off and went flying. Never could find it, so they uh, sent me another one and I replaced that. Just like hammered it back on there. I mean, it looks like it was made in somebody's workshop or something. I mean, it, it's definitely a piece of junk but it, it does work and it's cheap and i don't know there's something kind of cool about it all right let's try a 45 long colt also don't forget to check out sdi i don't think i mentioned them earlier sdi.edu check them out they'll teach you how to make better guns than this <laughs> all right i'm gonna try the i'm gonna try to hit the cowboy with this thing I, that hurt a little bit more than the um, the 410, I think. But I guess I gotta shoot it one more time. I don't know why, but I feel like I gotta shoot it at least four times. All right, put another 410 in there. That's really what it's for. And I'm gonna walk down here and shoot that ballastol can. See what that does. You know what? Actually, I'm not gonna do that because this thing. The barrel being as short as it is, I don't know how much energy it really has. I don't want to get a ricochet or something. Um, you know what? I'm going to shoot the tombstone target from up here. And you guys can listen to see if you hear any of the pellets hit it. I know the spread on this thing opens up pretty quick. Ah. You know, it looks like it's maybe moving a little. I don't know. I can't tell. Um, the spread on this thing, like I said, it opens up really quick because, I don't know if you can see in there, it has a little bit of rifling at the end of the barrel, which is probably for legal reasons. So that it's technically a handgun that is capable of shooting a, a shotgun shell. But I don't know. I just wanted to show you guys this thing. Thought you might find it interesting to get one more little look at it you know it's kind of rough the uh grip is cracked and everything on there but i don't know it's just a fun little gun had it for a long time now and um yeah it kind of sucks <laughs> to be honest <laughs> but it's i don't know there's something neat about it dad really hates it but I, I, I don't know there's something neat about it even though it sucks but uh, anyways hope you guys enjoyed that and i'll talk to you later